In this video, we're going to talk about the retargeting of uh, the entire database and using PDG to do that. Uh, in the previous video, we kind of went over this manual retarget, which was how to retarget for a single clip. Um, it's This network is basically the same thing. Uh, the difference being that um, uh, instead of explicitly setting a clip, we have attributes uh, that are created in PG, PDG that are basically going to be driving um, our motion capture import node. And uh, in case I didn't mention this before, we are bringing in a claim data, which uh, basically is a kind of two part, uh, requires two files. One is a skeleton file, and the other one is a uh, motion capture file. And so uh, if we kind of take a look at what this data looks like on disk, uh, once we've uh, unzipped it, um, you kind of have this directory structure where you have uh, these numbered folders and within the number of folders, you have um, a file uh, that is the ASF file. Uh, this is Windows, so it doesn't uh, show it by default, but you can look at the properties and yes, .asf, which is the skeleton. And then you have uh, the uh, animation or motion capture information uh, for all the different it takes. And so uh, these animation files are associated. You can have multiple animation files that are associated uh, with uh, one particular skeleton. And all the other uh, directories are set up in the same way. So this is something we're going to kind of need to account for. Um, when we do our setup with PDG, we need a way of kind of identifying the ASF file and uh, the AMC file that's associated with it. So um, that's uh, part of the trick that uh, we're going to be doing. Anyways, this uh, SOP network is largely the same, or with the exception of what I've already pointed out, the same as this manual retarget. So a lot of the uh, work um, ends up happening here. Uh, so here we have the, um, this is the ROP fetch that does the retargeting. And uh, what we're going to be concentrating on is what's kind of happening upstream of here, which is basically uh, the logic behind figuring out exactly which um, ASF file, the skeleton file we need, and which motion clip uh, file we need. So um, we can just kind of start at the top here. This is fairly straightforward. This is just downloading the file from the website. Um, you can specify the URL and where it gets downloaded to. Then we have the file decompress uh, operator, which is basically unzipping the archive. And uh, it's, of course, a single zip file. So we have one work item. But once it's unzipped, you know, there are many uh, files within that zip archive. In this case, there's like, um, you know, over 2,000 files. So uh, we use a work item expand to basically take that single work item um, and then expand it into, you know, the all the files that have been output from that um, uh, unzip operation. And here we go. So we can, you know, click on uh, one of these work items and uh, take a look at what we what we got here. So. Uh, yeah, so this is, you know, the file gives us the path um, and it has this, uh, this is an ASF file um, and we can, you know, come over here and take a look at this file and, you know, then we have, uh, yeah, so uh, these are basically, we have each work item represents an individual file that's come from this archive. Okay, so uh, once we have that, um, I uh, am feeding it into this attribute uh, from string uh, operator. And what this is basically doing is I'm splitting the uh, output, um, or in this case, the input coming in. Uh, I'm splitting that string uh, based off this delimiter. So we could kind of take a look at this work item. And we have our input. And we're basically taking that and splitting it up into pieces, right? So we basically end up with an array. The uh, slash is being as, used as the delimiter. So it's, you know, cutting it up uh, according to that. 
and uh, we're off to the races. So, and we're going to use this because we want to uh, get this identifier here, which is basically what uh, folder, what's the number of the folder that it belongs to. Um, so we come in here and uh, I'm creating this attribute called set name. And uh, so set name zero one, and I'm setting it to the way I'm setting it to this value is there's this PDG work item uh, string attribute array. Uh, this is Python, uh, and you can always look this up in the documentation. This is the one we're using uh, right now, string attribute array name, and it says return the string attribute in the array. So um, this is the uh, uh, attribute and the array, array that we're kind of uh, grabbing from. And then we have to specify which element we want to grab from that array. Uh, we're using the value of negative two. Um, you know, traditionally arrays, they start at zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, et cetera. Um, but if you use negative numbers, it basically starts uh, from the opposite end of the array. So in this case, we're grabbing this element right here, which is 0, 1. Um, and we are uh, setting our attribute name to that value. So we get set name 0, 1, which is exactly what we want. So this, the reason why we're doing this is we want a mechanism to kind of associate all the files that are in this subdirectory. Um, be they .amc files or .0 uh, .asf files. And this is, you know, we need to make this association, right? They need to, you need to have one .asf file for one .amc file and they need to correspond. So um, we basically established a method for uh, um, determining that. Okay, and then we have this operator here, which is the file pattern operator. And, um, you know, traditionally this is used to grab, uh, get a list or make work items uh, based on files on disk. So you could specify like a subdirectory and it would basically make work items out of all of the files in that subdirectory. Uh, but in this case, we're specifying an input and what um, this does, uh, what it gives us for free is it basically will split um, it gives us these two variables. Uh, it gives us the extension, so the file extension .amc, and it gives us the file name, um, so which is useful as well. Uh, in our particular case, what we're interested in, um, well, one of the things that's meaningful here is this dot, uh, the extension um, attribute. So if we come up here, yeah, we got uh, an ACM, um, and if you know, you can go through this work item by work item and you'll find the ASF files as well. Um, okay, so we now each work item has this kind of extension attribute and it's either going to be .amc or it's going to be .asf. So this gives us a way of kind of uh, determining which, uh, which it is. What, the, does this work item represent a skeleton or does it re represent motion capture data? Um, and then what we can do is split those two up. Um, so this is the split operation. And if we look at the help, uh, basically it's going to evaluate this in expression. And if the expression is true, um, the work items are going to come out here on the left-hand input. And if the expression is false, then they're going to go over here onto the right-hand input. So uh, what we end up with is coming out of this input are um, all the ASF files. And then coming over here, we have all the uh, AMC files uh, or the motion capture files. And uh, it basically splits these two guys up. And then uh, what we can do is uh, I have this attribute rename and it's renaming the uh, file name attribute to clip name. So we can come up here and take a look and we have this name called clip name and it's set to zero one underscore zero one. So um, that is useful as well. Okay, so we now have a kind of unique name and identifier for each of the um, uh, AMC files that you know correspond to its name. So zero one underscore zero one, right? 
All right, so uh, once we have those guys uh, split up, we want to recombine them, right? Because we want to basically make a work item that has an ASF file associated with it and an AMC file associated with it. So um, that's what this partition node is doing. And basically what it's doing is it's doing this based off the uh, um, this set name attribute, right? It's a, so the partition for each item, input, input work item combination. So it's combining them. And it's doing this based off the uh, set name attribute. And if you remember from up here, the, um, oh, sorry, that's the split. The set name is basically uh, this uh, number here. So it represents this subdirectory number. And it's a way of associating the ASF file with the AMC file. So, um, you know, which is, is, is great. So uh, if we come back down here and take a look, we you'll see that output now is an array with two elements. And so we have a, an ASF file and we have a uh, AMC file and these are combined in a single work item, and, which is great because it means we can uh, use this to um, set the file names. And we have a unique clip name as well for each of these guys. So uh, we come back uh, down here and we have some attribute creates. So I'm creating some attributes, uh, one called ASF that represents the you know the skeleton and another one called AMC that represents the um, the motion clip file and these are being set to the uh, input uh, which is also the output from here and it's basically you know I have the dot here to say which element of the array I want to access and if we take a look at this we now have a uh, AMC attribute which is pointing to the AMC file and the ASF attrib uh, attribute, which is pointing to the uh, ASF file. And then we also have the clip name, which is kind of the unique identifier for uh, these this particular clip. Um, and these are the attributes that are being used um, in this setup. So we have the ASF attribute, the AMC attribute and the clip name attribute. And the clip name is also being used down here to kind of uh, make a unique BGO for each of these guys. So uh, that's basically how this is handled. Uh, I'm gonna, that's quite a lot to digest. So I'm gonna end this video here and then we'll talk about the rest of the network in the next video.